Hi, I am Charles Ray from Flyability. This tutorial video will show you how to do a reconnaissance flight in a feeder and what to be careful of. In this kind of asset, the purpose is to inspect the liner's conditions. But before doing any flights it is important to assess the risk for the drone and the pilot. The objective is to be able to eliminate the risk for the pilot and mitigate the risk for the drone. Basically, a feeder is a funnel for the material. It can be underground or overground. Materials will be sent in this funnel to feed in most cases a conveyor belt. Let's have a look at the risks. The first identified risk is the potential falling rocks. To eliminate the risk for the pilot make sure you are not under or in direct line of the chute. The next risk would be the falling rock on the drone. If you fly in from the chute, make sure the feeder is as empty as possible and fly quickly through the narrowest passage of the chute. The next risk is the dust. If the asset is extremely dusty you might have trouble inspecting it. To eliminate the dust you could wet the asset before the flight, or if it is not too dusty you could simply try to avoid flying too close to any horizontal surfaces. If the asset is saturated in dust after a flight, letting it rest for 5 to 10 minutes will really help the visibility for your next flight. The next risk is the wind draft. If the feeder is outside, try to stay as much in the feeder as possible protected from the outside wind. If the feeder is underground, in some cases it might be possible to reduce the air draft coming from the ventilation. But anyway, you will most likely experience some wind perturbation at the narrowest part of the feeder. That's where the protective cage of the drone will be useful. The next risk is the loss of connection. Depending on your asset and how far the pilot will be you might want to use the range extender. The last risk is to get stuck in the narrowest part of the asset, which is most of the time la connection from the chute to the feeder. Make sure that this passage is at least 50 centimeters or 20 inches large. So let's have a look at the flight in itself. After the takeoff, I am flying close to the chute of the feeder. Before flying in the feeder, as it is a narrow passage, I am placing the drone sideways to allow the lighter to send beams far inside the feeder. I am careful not to stay right under the feeder to avoid falling rocks. I am then flying straight and quickly into the feeder avoiding contact with walls. I am flying quickly as this is the most dangerous place for falling rocks. After gaining a couple of meters in the feeder, I will do a 360 degrees turns in the middle of the feeder. The purpose of doing frequent 360 degrees turns is to map the area around the drone properly and avoid holes in the point cloud. My flight plan for this reconnaissance flight is to fly in all the areas of the feeder starting on the right side and then fly out. I am taking a couple of points of interest on the way when I am seeing missing refractory plates. I am staying inside the structure of the feeder as it is a windy day and the structure shields me from the wind. On my way out, I am again flying quickly through the chute and landing. This is what my flight plan looks like for a complete inspection. I decompose the asset in different zones. I will do a systematic inspection of each zone with one battery taking POI of each missing or broken part. Then I will use inspector to create my report. Each POI that I took during the flight are in green. I can always add new ones or remove them. I will be able to add annotations and descriptions on each of them. I can also add annotation on the picture directly. I then add live map views to the report to help the maintenance team to locate the defects and give information on what be fixed. After editing all my POI I simply click on create a report. I will then be able to share easily this report with all the annotations.